Hi everyone, welcome to Best Recapped Movies channel. Today we want to speak about movie that called the drop. This video contains spoiler. Please subscribe to our channel. First, we will find that there is a type of bars called drop bars. Drop bars are places where criminals launder money. A large amount of money circulates in these places and is transported by bagman to its final location. For security reasons, bar owners never know when their bar becomes a drop bar. Bob Sajanowski is a bartender who works in one of these bars. He is a calm man, but he can be very violent when needed. The manager of the bar is called Marv, who is Bob's cousin, but the main owner of the bar is the Chechen Mafia. A group of old bar men drink in memory of their old friend Richie Whalen, who was suspiciously killed. Marv reprimands Bob for letting an old lady drink for free and being soft at the bar, saying it's business, not charity. Bob is a devout Catholic and always goes to church. One night on his way back home he hears a dog whimpering in a neighbor's trash can. He finds the poor pit bull puppy severely injured left to death. Nadia, the owner of the house, wants to know who is searching her place. Bob explains her the situation and urges her to help the poor puppy. But Nadia suspects him and asks for his ID card. After assuring Bob, they take the puppy in to dress his wounds. The bruises on the puppy's body showed that it was severely beaten. But luckily the wounds are not too deep. Bob notices some bruises on Nadia's neck. Bob asks Nadia about her job and Nadia says she is a restaurant waitress, but has also worked at Animal Rescue for a while. They conclude that an animal rescue is not the right place to care for a dog, especially when Bob has already taken pity on the poor puppy. In the end, they decide to let Nadia keep the puppy for two days until Bob returns and takes it back. Bob returns to the bar and tells Marv what happened. He asks Marv if he knows Nadia or not. At this time on the street, two nervous brothers are talking to each other. They are going to steal Marv and Bob's bar. Their motivation is to show their superiors that they are capable of doing risky work. The younger brother, who is an addict, is afraid to attack a drop bar, but the other brother finally convinces him. While the bar is closing, robbers attack there. The robbers aim the gun at Bob and Marv. They give Marv a bag to put the money in. Marv calmly hands over the money and warns that they will regret it. During the robbery, Bob notices one of them's broken watches. They take the money and run away. After the robbery is over, Marv and Bob find bar worker Randy beaten to death in the backyard. Later a detective named Torre shows up to investigate. He knows Bob because they have been going to the same church for years. However, they have never spoken. Bob doesn't have much to say in the investigation because the robbers were covered from head to toe. But he reveals to the detective that one of them was wearing a broken watch that stopped at 6.15. It's also revealed the robbed money was approximately $5,000. Besides the crime, Detective Torres wonders how Bob always skips communion at church, which Bob initially opposed. Torres questions once more whether or not it is true. Bob assures him it isn't, while it's a lie. Bob has a very bad past, so he is ashamed to admit his past to the church. When Marv learns that Bob revealed the broken watch to the investigation, he is furious, believing that the Chechens will be angry. At the appointed time, Bob goes to Nadia to get the dog back. He asks Nadia to accompany him to a pet store to buy some supplies, since he has never owned a dog. Nadia picks up some bowls, a leash and a pop bag and a proper pet instruction book. Bob wants to choose a name for the puppy. He hesitates between the names Rocco and Mike. Nadia says Mike is a bad name and chooses Rocco, so they name the puppy Rocco. Although Bob prefers the name Mike. After the shopping gets done, Bob drops her off at home, while a thug named Eric Deeds is spying on them from a distance. Bob and Marv are shoveling snow in the yard. Chechen Mafia leader Chavka, who owns the bar, visits them. Chavka reveals that he has taken one of the men behind the robbery hostage. The man was severely tortured, a rod was inserted into his leg and his mouth was closed. Chavka asked Marv and Bob if they knew this man and they both said no. He also wonders why the police knew about the broken watch, and Bob apologizes for that. Chavka threateningly tells Marv that he must find the stolen money and get it back and then leaves. Marv is worried because if he knows how to get the money back, it means he had something to do with the robbery. On the other hand, Detective Torres has found evidence in his investigation that shows that Marv lost his bar to a Chechen mafia named Papa Yumarov 10 years ago. He talks to one of his colleagues from the Major Crimes Bureau and asks if they are going to arrest Papa Yumarov. 
but she replies that they are too powerful and cannot be brought down. Marv meets up with one of the robbers, Fitz, revealing that he is really behind the robbery. He severely scolds Fitz not only because of his stupid brother who wore a broken watch, but also because they hit Rhodey so badly making them call an ambulance which ends up getting cops involved in the case. He suggests that their bar become a drop bar soon telling Fitz that they must perform the robbery much cleaner this time. Bob enjoys Rocco's company and is learning to take care of the dog. He took Rocco to the park to play when Nadia approaches him while exercising. Missing her night shift at work, Nadia offers to take care of Rocco for a sum of money. Bob who is already attracted to Nadia, takes the offer and they exchange numbers. Marv lives with his sister Dottie while their father is held in a nursing home and his brain plugging into a machine to stay alive a tad longer. Dottie is tired of spending too much on her father, especially when she believes he is no longer alive and living in vain. She suggests to Marv that they unplug their father and enjoy their life like traveling to Europe and stuff like that. But Marv strongly disagrees and believes that they should spend their whole lives for their father. Bob and Nadia have taken Rocco to the park to play. After Nadia left, Eric Deeds appears and tells Bob that he has a nice dog. But Bob, suspicious of Eric's look, grabs Rocco and leaves. Elsewhere in the street, a thug-looking stranger in a car asks Marv for the hospital address. Marv gives him the address, but the man's behavior makes Marv suspicious of him. Back to Bob's house, where he talks to Rocco and apologizes for not being able to take him out today. There is a knock on the door and Eric is behind the door. Eric breaks into the house and asks where Bob left his puppy, much to Bob's surprise. He claims that the dog is his, but Bob refuses. Eric says that if Bob owns the dog, he must have a security chip number and a legal license. He then explains to Bob's security chip is implanted in dogs' bodies to reveal the owner's identity. Bob insists Rocco is his because Eric always beats him. But Eric threatens to blame Bob in front of the police. Bob asks what he wants, but Eric subtly threatens him, telling him it's sunny but you never know what it's going to be like. He then takes Bob's umbrella and leaves. Bob and Nadia establish a closer relationship. As they talk in a cafe, Nadia admits that Bob is the first person not to ask her about the bruise on her neck. But Bob believes it's about her and he's not here to judge her. However, Nadia tells him that she has a dark past. When she was pretty high, she cut her neck with a potato peeler. She hated herself and wanted to commit suicide, but she overcomes her feelings and now has a normal life. At the bar Marv shares his concern with Bob about the strange address guy and thinking his life is in danger. Marv is still unable to forget about losing his bar to Chavka Yumarov after 10 long years. Bob is shocked to find something bizarre in a trash bag, a chopped hand along with some money covered in blood. Apparently, it is related to another thief who was killed. They are sent back the stolen money along with, with one of the robber's broken watches and chopped hand. They wonder who took the money back and why. Bob picks up the severed hand and skillfully begins to wrap it. During work, Eric suddenly enters the bar. As they forgot to lock the door, Marv tries to kick her out and says they are closed. While Bob almost gets caught Eric greets Bob and leaves the place. Marv is puzzled as to how on earth Bob and Eric know each other. Marv is even more worried when Bob says that he claims to be Rocco's owner. Eric is revealed to be a local hitman. Rumored to be the killer of Richie Whalen, who has served a drink in his memory at the beginning of the film. Marv reveals to Bob that Eric has spent months in a mental institution and is also a jailbird. He asks Bob not to mess with the man. Bob, however, surprised by the shocking information, doesn't seem scared. He puts the severed hand in a bag and goes outside. Marv begins to draw blood from the money to give it to the Chechens. Meanwhile, while playing with Rocco, Bob also throws the wrapped hand into the river. Detective Torres then approaches him and asks if Bob knows about Eric Deeds, which Bob denies. Some time later Chavka shows up at the bar to get back the stolen money. Chavka also informs them that his bar will be the drop bar for Super Bowl night. Eric goes to Bob and starts questioning him about Nadia, specifically if she stabbed herself yet again lately. Bob goes to Nadia and asking her how she knows Eric. This question scares Nadia, she panics and leaves Bob, who is surprised. Back to the Marv, he finds Fitz and asking to get in the car. But Fitz is freaked out because he lost his brother to them just like this. Finally Marv assures him that there is no danger and Fitz gets into the car. 
Marv offers him the Super Bowl's night robbery, when a huge amount of money will be held at the bar, but Fitz reject his offer and say only wants to stay alive. The trunk pops open again and Marv tells the guy to get out and slam it shut. When Fitz does so, Marv runs him over several times and kills him right away. He then runs away, changes the car, and leaves the place. During this time, Bob and Nadia visit while Nadia feels sorry for her previous behavior. She tell to Bob that Eric was her boyfriend and about how Eric and she used to date. Eric was sweet at first, but soon she realized how awful he was and they broke up. Nadia also alerts Bob that Eric is the one who killed Richie Whalen, which Bob already knows. Later Marv meets with Eric in a diner and tells him that Bob is scared of him. Eric explains that he wants to get more respect from Bob and if not there will be a real problem. But Marv calms him down, telling him that he has a solution where everyone can win. In fact, his plan is Eric help him with the Super Bowl robbery and distract Eric enough to give up struggling Bob. Detective Torres meets up with his colleague from earlier. He is provided with Eric's psych file and something in the file attracts his attention. Returning home, Bob notices that Rocco is not home. He goes to Eric and asks him to give Rocco back. In response, Eric asks Bob to give him $10,000 to let him keep Rocco. Eric threatens Bob that he will ignore feeding Rocco, and if the puppy asks for food Eric will smash his head with a rock. And then he leaves. Marv informs Bob that he won't be at the bar for the Super Bowl. Bob is skeptical he's doing something crazy that they can't clean up this time. Marv yells at him as he is haunted by his glory days, when he was respected until he lost the bar to Chavka. He is paranoid that Bob always gives Marv's former stool to the old lady to humiliate him. Bob replies that it's just a stool and doesn't mean anything. Back at the bar, Bob tucks $10,000 into the basement and a gun to getting back Rocco. On the other hand Eric breaks into Nadia's home. Intimidating her into accompanying him to Marv's bar, despite her initial refusal, Nadia opts to not mess with the goons and accept them, to Bob's despair. They show up at the bar together that night, while Nadia is embarrassed. Marv calls Eric and to find that he is already at the bar because of the commotion. He warns Eric not to underestimate the very soft-spoken and gentle Bob. Marv lines his trunk with plastic and drives to the bar. He parked a little further away to keep an eye on how their plan was going. During the night, various gangs of mobsters drop money. The bar eventually empties, excluding Eric and Nadia. Eric shows Nadia his gun before going outside to smoke. Nadia sobs and warns Bob that Eric intends to shoot him. When Eric returns, Bob offers him the money for the dog. Eric inquires about how much Nadia is worth to him and states that he'd rather have the money in the safe. Bob refuses and he starts telling to him about Richie Whalen, whom he has claimed to kill. He reveals that Marv had a terrible gambling problem while working as a loan shark. Richie was one of many people who owed him money. However Richie won a large sum of money at the casino and paid off Marv, but it wasn't enough to cover Marv's debt. So Bob tracked him down and shot him twice in the face to keep anybody from knowing that he paid Mark back. Bob then asks Eric that if Bob has killed the guy, how can Eric go around claiming to have done it himself? Then Bob shoots Eric twice in the face and kill him. He informs Nadia that she is now safe for life and free to leave. She can't believe he trusts her not to tell anyone about the murder. Petrified, she rushes out. Bob is disposed of Eric's body. Chavka who liked Bob from the beginning, offers for him to run the bar from now on and also renames the place Bob's bar. Outside, Marv sees the suspicious man from earlier approaching his car. He knows what's next, Marv is shot in the head in seconds. Torres shows up to further investigate while Marv is no longer alive and Eric has gone missing. Bob isn't surprised, because this is the type of neighborhood. It also turns out that Eric couldn't have killed Richie Whalen because he was in the mental clinic at the time. However the detective is pretty confident that Bob is the one who was behind Richie Whalen's murder as well as Eric Dietz. But he is short on evidence. Bob brings Rocco to Nadia's home and apologizes to her for the night at the bar. He asks if they can hang out. Nadia is feared, but she loves Bob. She finally agrees. And here stories end. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.